Well, aloha kakahiaka. We are welcome to our Re Aloha Friday Hawaii real estate show. Today is June 26, 2020, and we're kind of warming everything up. So if you're not watching this live, you can zoom forward about five minutes. If you are watching this live, we're going to start right on the money at five at uh, 9 a.m. Hawaii time, which is going to be in about five minutes. I'm going to bring in my good friends over here. We've got we've got Dylan and we've got Scott, and we're doing a couple of battles right now. We're doing a battle of the backgrounds, and we're doing a battle of the Aloha shirts. So let's see, uh, uh, Scott, why don't you kind of get started there? You've got the uh, tell us about well, what's the back here? What's the background going on over there, man? Uh, backgrounds Diamond Head. This is from my lanai where I live at the base of Diamond Head. So you have a uh, Diamond Head right here, and then this is Diamond Head Circle, which is one of the more prominent neighborhoods in in the Diamond Head area, there was a house right up on the hillside here that we sold for about eight and a half million a couple of years ago. So, uh, good location, nice day, hardly any clouds in the sky. So, nice cool breeze. I I, I love that. I got to tell you, I love that um, uh, that those swaying palm trees. In fact, I'm just I, I don't even want to see myself here. I'm just going to put that back on. I love those swaying palm trees back there. You got a just a classic tropical, classic tropical view. Loving it and. Yeah, this is my sanctuary. Every night I have dinner out here. I can see the sunset right off the, the end there, and it's just you know perfect temperature, 80 degrees, and relaxing. So it's a great way to unwind yeah. at the end of the day. Boy, you're not kidding. You're uh, you are not kidding. All right. So uh, so Dylan, uh, fill us in here. What's what's what is going on? What is going on at, in Kona there, man? What it, is that kind of a background? Yeah, you're you're uh, getting to see a complete anomaly. This maybe happens a couple of days a year, but it's actually raining at nine o'clock in the morning. That's like fog behind me so that's an ocean view that you can't see right now and this rarely ever happens i think we have a a, a storm coming through because the weather was really weird last night i live at like 1100 feet and it's normally pretty cool at night but it was pretty warm and there was like no breeze at all so very odd weather and then it was kind of nice this morning i could see the ocean and then about 30 minutes ago this this uh fog rolled in and it's it's raining right now you know, when uh, when I see that kind of a background, that that foggy thing, you know, uh, I, it makes me think of um, kind of a primordial primordial soup. I think about, you know, this is maybe like what what the what the earth was like in here. Let, let's show Dylan again. So when when I look behind you there, right, it's like it looks like this sort of primordial, you know, prehistoric uh, earth kind of uh, space that I'm seeing over there. And it's 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 really it's it's really a trip. Uh, interesting, very interesting, but it's looking good there, man. Looking good, love it, love it. Yeah, it just so, shows uh, that we get we get all types of weather here for sure. Boy, you are you are not you've got that you totally have got that right. Excellent, good. Hey, uh, it's, it's still seventy five degrees, so you know <laughs> I can never complain about that when it's raining. So <laughs> can't go wrong, can't go wrong with that one. Can't go wrong with yeah. that one at all. Yeah. Hey, uh, fill me in on uh, let's let let's do the little uh, the the Aloha shirt uh, walk through. Uh, we got like a couple minutes before we we start live. Uh, Scott, fill it. What 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 are you wearing there, man? Yeah. So this since Leon Day was yesterday, halfway to to Christmas, I figured I'd bust out my Rin Spooner Christmas Aloha shirt. So this is one of the ones that they do. All all these Rin Spooners look like they're reversed inside out, but um they do a Christmas one every year. And man, probably for about 10 years, I always got, uh, every year I got the, their Christmas version and they're always different, different design and whatnot, but I really like them. And then I'd go uh, Christmas time, I'd go to the, one of the hotels for the buffet to, to enjoy a Christmas buffet. Got to wear the Aloha shirt. So, uh, uh, you know, I guess the, the combination of Christmas shirt plus Aloha shirt is kind of a tough one to beat. So Dylan, what about you? What's, what, what are you wearing today? I went back to uh, I think the, the the designer that started this all off our first show. I was wearing a, a Mana Ola golf shirt, which is somewhat of a more modern uh, type of Aloha shirt now that they're making them out of uh, golf shirt material. But this is a more traditional uh, shirt by the same designer, Mana Ola. He's kind of a a newer, more modern designer. Ren Spooner's been around forever. Mana Ola's been around for a few years, but real popular with the the ladies. And my wife bought me this shirt at one of her many shopping expeditions. So. Always, my my rule is always have your wife do you always have your wife do your shopping for you. That's you you can't you can't go wrong with that one. Cannot yes. cannot kind of go wrong with that. Hey, excellent, great. So um, 
and of course I'm wearing my, my, uh, my brand color shirt here where I'm almost, I'm trying to get almost a blend. It almost blends with the background color there. It's almost the same kind of shade. That's what my, my goal here is to be brand center. All right, boys and girls, it is, uh, it is nine o'clock. Let is, let, let, let us uh, rock and roll over here. I uh, want to welcome everybody to our Aloha Friday Hawaii real estate show. Uh, we're taking your questions live and primarily focusing on real estate in Hawaii. Uh, let's uh, let's rock and roll here. We've got our first, our, our sort of part the way we start our show here is our coronavirus update and market update, uh, 626. And um, so the big news for today, the big huge news for today is that it is August, uh, for as of August 1st, the governor of Hawaii, Governor Ige, announced that uh, if you are pre-tested within 72 hours of flying, within 72 hours of flying, you can skip quarantine. So let me repeat that. If you get pre-tested and are tested negative, of course, of coronavirus, you can land in Hawaii and will not have to uh, go through quarantine. So that is a really, really big deal. Um, there's a lot of details. It was just kind of a press release announcement. I sat through the whole thing. Uh, they talked about, you know, who's going to do the testing and things of that nature. And uh, for example, they they talked about the testing might be done through uh, CVS pharmacies or other uh, private uh, testing facilities that they didn't talk about how they're going to be authorized or who's going to have official documentation or how it's all going to work that was not discussed. But generally what's going to happen is you're going to go to a CVS pharmacy or I would assume a Walgreens or some kind of a testing place, some kind of an authorized testing place, get tested, show up with your some kind of documentation that shows that you're negative on coronavirus, show up at the airport and uh, you will be good to go. So that is a, that's a, a huge piece of huge piece of news. Um, other related news, they're talking about some travel bubbles. Uh, if you're from New Zealand, for example, or from Australia, place that have next to no coronavirus, they're talking about some kind of views on that. So that is the big news, folks. And uh, I, uh, if you folks have any questions about that, you, pop them in the comments right now, and I'll do the best I can to answer them. We do have some real estate questions, so I kind of want to have Dylan and Scott comment in on this. So we have a couple. Um, so Jay from uh, St. Paul, Minnesota says... Is it cheaper to buy a home now in Hawaii with COVID-19 going on? And James from San Francisco says, I see that the quarantine will be lifted in August. Are there restrictions on viewing properties? Um, why don't we kind of, let's kind of round this up. Dylan, why don't you kind of fill us in on, well, actually Dylan and Scott, you know, we answer this sort of, is it cheaper to buy a home now question that comes up sort of every time. Has this changed? Have there been any market changes or you guys want to comment? And so Dylan, why don't you get started first? You're, uh, you're muted. Unmute your phone. There we go. All right. Yeah, not, go. not yet. Um, we don't get the data until a few days after the month closes. So we did discuss the data last, uh, last show about, May and, and the, the median prices hadn't really changed. Um, the number of homes that are selling has changed. So there are a lot less homes that are selling, but that's also off being offset by there's less listings. So the buyer demand that is still there is being offset by less inventory. And so we haven't seen prices fall yet. You know, it may take a little bit, little while if that's gonna happen, but so far we're still in high demand. And, and we'll talk later, we got a, a couple of featured properties and uh, there, there's lots of activity even on on million dollar plus properties right now so it's not cheaper yet it's not, <laughs> not sure if it's going to be scott any change on the oahu market that's uh, that's worth noting uh not not really change i mean single family home price median home price is still up uh three and a half percent condos are up 3.4 percent but and i for example i have five escrows right now four of them went over asking price and the fifth one is at full price so that kind of gives an indication of some of the competitiveness we still have a supply demand imbalance here more buyers in the market than sellers so um, prices have gone up but i am starting to see the the data in those second home markets specifically waikiki is really starting to change the numbers are starting to change much more in favor of buyers so that, that is the one market rule. That and Kakako, I believe, will have some changes. Now, when you say much more in favor of buyers, I'm assuming what you're saying is that the prices are beginning to drop in Waikiki and Kakako. Uh, prices, not as much Kakako, but prices are down 4%. Closed sales are down 67% in Waikiki. 
but the but the number of new listings is only off 11 percent um, so you're seeing a lot less sales but the inventory and, and there's more inventory there's 10 percent more inventory now so inventory starting to build and then we'll see how the quarantine uh, you know, being able to allow tourists to come back in without the quarantine will affect that marketplace. But I think it's going to drag. It's going to take a while for anything to kick back in. So I do think Waikiki is is the buy opportunity coming up here, it, and it's here now. And and you think that's because because why? Because there's a lot of probably sort of vacation rentals, a lot of sort of the old Airbnb effect over here. A lot of vacation rentals that now are not being rented at all. They're losing money. I need to dump this property because I've been I'm over leveraged on it, or who knows what the reason is. Yeah, I don't necessarily. Yes, there's part of that, but I think it's more the buyer demand has stopped because you don't have the offshore buyer coming in to buy. And if somebody locally is looking to buy in Waikiki, they're looking at, hey, I've got no rental income coming in. So how can I really project what the true value of this is going to be and when that rental income is going to come back? So you're seeing less sales in that area. Uh, people don't, the workforce housing doesn't have to live down there necessarily. And a lot of them don't want to because it's very congested and heavily tourism based. So they live outside of Waikiki. So those markets outside of Waikiki should continue to perform well. Uh, okay, got it. So that, that's a variety of reasons why the market in Waikiki is, is what it is. Interesting. Okay, so the other question that we uh, we have over here is, um, is, is it uh, viewing restrictions? Uh, James says, I see the quarantine will be lifted in August. Are there still restrictions on viewing properties? That's more of an industry thing. Dylan, is there, what's, is there a difference? Well, let, let, let's talk about Kona first or the Big Island or Maui for that matter. What, is there any restrictions on viewing? Like before you couldn't even show a property. Is that changed? Uh, it, it didn't change. For the Big Island, it opened up June 1. Each county is handling that separately. So you got to check with the county that you're going to. But in, on the Big Island in particular, uh, June 1, showings and open houses uh, could start again. So we do take precautions. Obviously, we uh, wear a mask. Uh, we hand sanitize. We, we try not to touch anything. Don't open cabinets and touch doors. So a lot of times listing agents will go to a property prior and open stuff up and make it easy so we don't have to. We can minimize the, the, the touching of surfaces and things like that. Uh, leaving your shoes on, which is a weird thing in Hawaii, but that also is recommended. So you're not, um, you know, your feet aren't touching the uh, ground in the home. So there are some things and precautions that we are uh, taking, but definitely you can you can see property now as long as you're beyond your 14 day quarantine or, you know, if this changes in August where you, you can bypass it, uh, we should be good to go to show property. Scott, is there anything different going on on Oahu that Dylan has that, that, that Dylan has mentioned that that is different? Uh, Very the, the, similar. First of all, the we leave your shoes on in Hawaii. It's like, oh my God, <laughs> you got to be kidding. That's that's how you know things are messed up. Yeah, that's a hard one to do. Um, yeah, no, we're actually even doing open houses now at this point, but they're very limited, you know, limited number of people coming through at a time. Um, like Dylan said, masks, gloves, if you can, uh, we have sanitizing wipes. Um, one of the practices I've been having with buyers is, hey, drive your own car. Or I'll drive my own car. So we're, we're not mixing, commingling within the, within the same, you know, car and we'll meet it, meet at the location. Uh, that way it minimize it for everybody, the exposure. Right, right. The old, the old drive me around to look at homes is kind of out the window, at least for a little while, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm, one thing that we had talked about offline would be, I, I'd like to get some feedback from the folks that are watching, uh, is that, you know, does this, knowing this now, knowing that you can get pre-tested and come over to Hawaii uh, starting August 1st without having to wait in quarantine, is that affecting your plans? Is that something that you'd be interested in? Are there, you know, we, I know uh, you guys both have told me that we have a whole bunch of people that have been sort of biting, you know, chopping on the bit. Uh, to get over here and start looking at these properties. And uh, I'm just kind of, I'd like to get some feedback from you folks. Is this changing your, uh, is this August 1st thing affecting what you're doing? Are you planning on coming over? Um, is there something that we can help you with uh, to kind of get yourself arranged? That'd be kind of something I'd like to kind of to put out to everybody. All right, let's um, let's move on to our, Let's move on to our next little topic over here. And that is, uh, do I want to let you all know a quick update? Uh, a couple of weeks ago, if uh, you're an avid uh, fan of the show, I did say we were going to have a Maui uh, person on the show this week. We're still auditioning. We have not found just the right person that we want to join us. Of course, uh, we have experts available, uh, both Dylan and Scott and myself. We have people that are can assist 
in terms of professionals, the best professionals on Maui and Kauai. We're just looking for the right person uh, to come on, on camera and make this an enjoyable uh, enjoyable experience. So I just want to give you all a quick up the net where we won't be talking too much about Maui specific stuff because we don't have our Maui person yet. All right, uh, let's, let's move on over here. So this is one that, uh, you know, uh, a couple of a couple of shows ago we had this was for dylan a couple of shows ago and we had some technical difficulties and he got all pixelated and i really wanted to give dylan a chance because i thought this was a really good one so um so this is from uh, michael at, in maple grove minnesota and he says dylan what can i get for 500k on the big island we travel to hapuna almost every year our priority is always a good swimming beach. Can we get something decent for 500K that would be walking distance to a good swimming beach? Also, Hilo side is obviously significantly less expensive than Kona, but are there any hidden spots there that are close to good swimming beaches that you can get for less than on the Kona side? Thank you. Dylan, take it away. All right, we'll take we'll take Kona first. Um, for a home, the answer is pretty much no. <laughs> You can definitely get a, a very nice condo for $500,000 or less that is going to be walking distance to a good swimming beach. Uh, Hapuna in general doesn't really have uh, there's some really high end multi million dollar properties and condos nearby, but in general, there isn't any regular residential uh, property near Hapuna. You do have to drive. Waikaloa Village is the largest and closest uh, residential area. And you definitely can get a home in Waikaloa Village for around 500,000. And there's a lot of nice condo options there and in the Waikaloa Resort areas around that price point. So there definitely are options. Walking distance to Hapuna is, is a little bit harder, but definitely the Kona side has better beaches than the east side, uh, mainly because it's just an older side of the island. And that's why the north uh, west side of the island has the beautiful beaches like Hapuna because they uh the lava flows happened longer ago and those those volcanoes are extinct and so there's more erosion it's kind of geology but on the east side it's a younger side of the island so you don't have as many sandy nice beaches on the east side there's a couple but but again because it's nice and close the real estate nearby is pretty high priced even though it is on the east side great so that's uh that's that's yeah that's that's the one nice thing about the Kona side you do have some you know gorgeous gorgeous beaches um and uh yeah rocky it's more like rocky rocky black lava rock sort of that's the thing in, beaches yeah that's the thing you can definitely get property in close proximity to the ocean but it's a 15 foot cliff rocky cliff with very rough water <laughs> so it doesn't really do you any good because even the best watermen don't get in the water in those types of places and the play the prices reflect that yeah, I would definitely say this. Guys, is there anything you want to chime in on this one real quick? Uh, on Oahu's that? Uh, no, just to, to, to chime in on, on, on what, what is there anything you want to add to what Dylan said as far as the, the big on east side and, and the Kona side? No, I mean, he he hit the nail on the head. He's, he nailed it. And, and all the right. beat, all on that other side. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Good. All right. Let's uh, let's move on to our uh, let's great. Let's get on to our next one. And by the way, you saw the uh, the comments. It looks like uh, uh, Rob. Uh, Rob is saying that uh, you know, he's uh, coming here in November. So yeah, definitely there's a great requirement to be, be tested. You're gonna wanna beat that for sure. And then Mark, uh, yeah, Mark, August and September, man, that's that's the time, to, that's, that is the time. All right, uh, we got one here for uh, for you, Scott, and um, it's a combo. In fact, we get kind of hit between both you guys on it, but uh, here it is, because this comes up a lot. And so there's a great time to answer it. Um, so Jason from Knoxville says, you know, what can I expect to get for 200K for a condo on each island what amenities age condition to look for what neighborhoods to check out and then the follow on with is uh george uh from bristol and uh more on the big island he says i have about 250k to spend on a house it seems like the big island is my only affordable island can you get a 1200 square foot house two bedrooms two bath in a decent condition for that price any other of the islands, single family home, not a condo. Mahalo. So it's the general question that again we get we get it often on the you know what does 250k buy or something like that. So Scott, why don't you kind of get started with this? And you know if someone says I want you know I want to spend 250 on Oahu, what's your response? Yeah, 250 thousand. If you're in Honolulu, you're you know Punchbowl Makiki, your kind of workforce housing area, and your studio to a one bedroom with a park install, no frills building, 
um, very minimum, probably 500 square feet max. There's a couple in Waikiki, but they're going to be hotel rooms, essentially a short-term rental kind. And that was like, when I looked, it was Waikiki Marina with a thousand dollar a month maintenance fee. So that kind of blows the the idea of a two hundred fifty thousand dollar purchase out out of the water because your payment's going to be significantly higher for that. Otherwise, your uh, leeward coast, Makaha Waianae side, um, which gives you distance, you're going to be out in the country, and the same thing up on the windward coast near the North Shore. That's that's it. You essentially start with your your condo pricing, what your thinking of living in at 250,000 here. So oh, wow. so so what you're basically saying is really 250 is really the floor. You really yeah. wouldn't want to realistically speaking if you want to get some sort of a long-term place that you want to live in for a bunch of years that you're not going to get sort of cramped up in or right. tired in or whatever. You really want to be looking above the 250 range. 250 is really the or late certainly the floor of what your of what your range is. That's correct. And I would say now, the single family home side is half a million, 500. Oh, great, great. Single family home, half a million on, on Oahu. Again, just to get yourself started. Yeah, you can get a little less on the, on the leeward coast, but yeah, 400,000, but the, it's gonna need work, single wall construction, commute, all the things we've talked about before. Right, right. It's the old, good old uh, supply and demand kind of feature. So, but the, obviously it's a different angle on the Big Island. So Dylan, you know, uh, again, what's, you know, 250, I want to spend, you know, I want to spend 250, get a single family home, two bedroom, two bath is what he's saying, a 1200 square foot home. What's that market looking like on the big on where would you, is, is that, is that a possibility? Yes, it is a possibility. You definitely can get that and a very decent uh, home in, in really good condition. The other two things that are going to come with that though, are definitely a drive. You're going to be a ways away from the major, you know, market centers of Kona and Hilo probably 30 minutes minimum 40 minutes to an hour um it would be more on average and you're also most likely going to have county or uh, catchment water so the rural areas of the big island don't have municipal water service most of those areas get enough rainfall where many people live on catchment just fine it's not a big deal but that's two things that are definitely going to come with a property that is in that 200 to 300 dollar price range a lot of times you're going to get it with an acre of land too because these are agricultural subdivisions that were subdivided a long time ago and so you know you get some space you get some land maybe to do some planting and stuff but you just do have to be okay with the rural nature of driving you know 30 to 40 minutes to a grocery store and definitely an hour plus to like an airport or costco and stuff like that so you can get it you just got to Get the other things that come with it so to to find in the same kind of question i've asked to scott it's like if you if you didn't want to be you know in out in the boonies per se or you know a half hour drive 40 minute drive into you know into modern civilization and you kind of wanted to kind of live let's say close to quote town uh whatever town that is whether it's hilo or kona what kind of a price range really should you realistically be not realistically but what kind of price range would you recommend if i wanted to live a little closer didn't want to drive so far out you, you almost got to be looking at five hundred thousand plus for a single family house i mean there are homes that come on the market for under five hundred thousand in those areas but they're going to be fixer uppers they're going to need a lot of work sometimes you're going to need cash because they're going to be reos that you're going to have to uh, compete with other cash buyers for so home home wise you're looking five hundred thousand plus there are definitely a lot of condo options in in that lower uh, price range, two to three hundred thousand. More going to be one bedroom, small. But again, as Scott mentioned, you definitely want to take into account the maintenance fees because a lot of times people have an idea of their monthly cost if they're doing a mortgage, or you know what their overall cost of living is going to be month to month. And if they don't factor in a five hundred to a thousand dollar a month maintenance fee, it can throw that two hundred thousand to three hundred thousand dollar purchase price off, you know, when you run the numbers, either in a mortgage or your expected monthly costs, if you're paying cash. So that's an interesting thing now, what, you, what you're saying, because I, I just heard Scott saying, look, you know, if you're looking at single family home, you got to be looking at 500K. And I just heard you say, you know, five, you really got to have, you know, 500K. Now there's a difference in those two 500Ks. The 500K that Dylan is talking about, you're in I don't want to call it a prime location, but you're in a very desirable location. You're close to you're close to town. You're close to shopping. Uh, and moving Scott, ready, you know. And you, move, you, moving ready. Yeah, Scott's talking it, fixer upper five hundred. <laughs> Bad <laughs> fixer upper. 
<laughs> Either that or you're way, way out. You're way out. You're in, you're in Booty Land. <laughs> you're you're in Neville. You're in Neville. I mean, I was just looking at a flip property, which I sent you that picture of, Peter, and 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 Palolo for 400000 but I, it's a, you know, 150000 175 you're going to have to put into it. This thing was hammered. But but you can move into a half million dollar property in Eva Beach, move in, move in condition. I got one coming on the market Tuesday. We're five bedroom, three bath, 1,700 square feet. We're going to be at 675, um, which is, it, it'll be straight move in condition. But you can get it right. at 500,000 there. And, well, and uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. But Oahu is developed from Honolulu outward. So the closer you are to the urban core, the older the property tends to be and the more expensive it ends up being because of your close proximity to everything that you want. The further out you go, the, the more the commute uh, will get and the more affordable it gets and the newer the homes get. Yeah, and again, so the, the big difference is, you know, the, in, in terms of the, uh, the, uh, the the difference in what you get for the money is, you know, in Kona, it's 500K move-in condition. You're really close to, quote, town. Uh, in Honolulu, it's 500K, 600K, but you're out in Eva Beach, which is, you know, on a bad day for traffic, it's a it's a two-hour commute, a half a hour and a half uh, commute. These days with COVID, it's a twenty-minute commute. But uh, <laughs> that's that's the that is the that is the difference. You know, we we've talked about this before, um, but uh, Mike uh, hit it to us real quick. Uh, Scott, really fast answer: price range to rent a place on Oahu. Price range quick. I mean, long term, you're talking roughly thirteen, fourteen, fifteen hundred a month for say a one bedroom or a studio up to 2000 then 2000 plus for a one bedroom and 23 to 2300 plus for a two bedroom condo in town. Okay, great. Thanks. That's, that's for Mike. All right. Um, let us, uh, let's move on to our, uh, next little segment over here. So uh, really quick, want to give you guys a pitch. If you're, are you in the Ohana? Ohana means family and family never means we never leave family behind. So I want to invite you all, if you're not already a member, get to livinginhawaii.com. You'll have a pop-up for the newsletter. Most of you that I'm that are here probably got a notification from the newsletter. The newsletter is the way we communicate everything. It gives you all the features, gives you all the articles uh, and the reminders for the show. Kind of want to invite you all uh, to be a part of our group. Okay, uh, let's move on here. I've got a question, and uh, this one's kind of like for me, uh, what, but we can all, all talk about it as it comes up. Um, and it is from uh, Mark in Santiago, Chile. Welcome, Mark. He says, I'm considering moving to Oahu in a few years and would like to know what items I should definitely bring with me and what items I definitely do not need to bring because it's cheaper or easier to acquire them on the island than to ship them from the mainland. I'm referring to things like furniture, appliances, dishes, beds, cars, etc. Thanks, guys. So I'm going to open this up to, to the guys as well. Uh, but my, my first take on it is what I tell people is sell everything. Sell everything. The only thing to perhaps that you want to uh, uh, pay to move over might be a car. Car is going to cost you around twenty five hundred to three thousand dollars to ship from the U.S. mainland to Hawaii. Uh, you got to decide if it's smarter to sell the car and then buy it again over here, or whether you want to take it with you. Sometimes it does make sense to bring the car with you, so you don't have to kind of think about that too much. That would be the only thing. Everything else, clothing. The only clothes you're ever going to use in Hawaii are summer clothes. I had brought, you know, when I had first moved there, I brought over jackets and I had a couple of things. I never used any of them. I, the only, the only jacket I've ever used is a windbreaker and I, and I didn't have any windbreakers. So don't bring anything other than summer clothes. Um, appliances, don't bring any appliances, uh, you know, blenders, et cetera. You'd have no idea what kind of uh, counter space you're going to have at your house. You have no idea how much space you're going to have available or how big your cabinets are going to be. Don't bring any of that over. Maybe you want to bring some utensils over, maybe some really small things. I suppose I would bring over my coffee grinder because I'm going to, I know I'm going to have coffee and I don't, if I had no space in my house at all, I still have my coffee grinder. But other than that, uh, don't bring over any furniture. It's super expensive to bring the furniture over and you don't even know what you're going to be moving into. You have no idea what's going to be happening. So my two cents is leave everything behind. Uh, take your valuables, scan your photos, scan the photos digitally. You know, if you have albums, CDs, scan all that, you know, read that in so that you don't take any of that stuff. Just take your valuables and only, you know, your valuables, your summer clothes, and that's about it. That's my 
two cents. I, I want to hear uh, what you guys think. Dylan, what's what's your take on, on what you tell people when they say, what should I move over here? My take on it is if you're going to bring a little bit, bring a lot. So what I mean by that is if you're going to, if you're going to ship stuff over here, you know, some people have some furniture, you know, a, a family heirloom dresser or something that they can't live without. If you're going to ship a few things, it's better to just get an entire 20 foot container and pack it full of stuff. Um, you can, you definitely can get stuff cheaper in the mainland than you can get it here, but shipping stuff individually is going to be extremely expensive. So I've had clients kind of on both ends of the spectrum, do what Peter's saying, sell everything, come with nothing, figure it out when you get here. And then the other end of the spectrum is, is they, they pack a 20, 40 foot container full of everything that they own and bring it over here. The cost of shipping container is pretty much going to be the same, whether or not it's got two things in it or it's totally full. So you want to maximize your efficiency by making sure you bring the maximum if you're going to, if you're going to ship a few things, because it's, it's, it's about $7,000 a ship a container from the mainland. So you just got to figure out the economics to see if it makes sense. Do you have enough stuff that you're going to save money by not buying new stuff here or uh, does it not make sense and sell everything and figure it out when you get here? That seven thousand is a great rule of thumb. You're saying seven thousand to to have a container of what a like a forty foot container kind of a thing. Is that what the, is that what you're? That's a that's a twenty foot container, I believe. Twenty foot container. Yeah. Twenty foot container, seven thousand dollars. I'm assuming ship it what out of California. Is that what your uh, is that what, what the cost is? Yes, and it's a little bit more if you got if you're gonna ship it from somewhere else, but not that much more because you know right. they just put it on a railway and get it. It's the boat that takes that takes the longest once they put it on the boat in California or the West Coast. Scott, what do you tell people when they tell you, you know, what stuff should I move over here? Yeah, this is a great question. Uh, first of all, to, to Dylan's response, we better make sure uh, Young Brothers doesn't accidentally drop that container into the uh, ocean over there in Hilo Bay. <laughs> oh, man, that's another story. We'll have to kind of, you know, quit what's, what Wait, Scott is well, referring funny, to. There was a, a funny comment on that. I was, I was actually showing property in Hilo on Monday, and one of my buddies that uh, lives on the coast saw the containers. <laughs> <laughs> he oh, called wow. me. He's like, "What's going on with that?" So, so let me, so so let me kind of get everybody, to our, our our viewers, up to speed here. There was a story that uh, Young Brothers, who is the uh, the local company that ships inter island uh, uh, containers, um, somehow dropped, literally dropped twelve containers, fell off the ships, and were floating, literally floating around in the ocean. You know, loosely, kind of, you know, I don't know how they were like so buoyant, but uh, that's kind of what we're talking about. Uh, so uh, that's that's the that's the young. Young brothers joke. So Dylan, now what was that again? Now you had your 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 buddy who saw containers fl floating around. Yeah, he lives on he lives on the coast and has you know an ocean view, and it basically fell off in in uh, North Hilo, so he could see them. And he was wondering <laughs> what it was, and then later on in the news, he found out that it was containers. So hopefully, there's uh, insurance for those those containers. All right, great. So I'm sorry, okay, as so we got a little bit sidetracked. Scott, uh, what, let's finish off with, with uh, where you were started with this. Yeah, no, this is a conversation I have with a, a lot of clients and especially the military clients that I've been working with because the, the government will ship their goods no charge. So that the, the tendency is to not want to have to purge all that stuff and just bring everything. And I've had I've had plenty of times where people are wanting to buy their home to fit their furniture. And it's the complete backwards concept of what you really want to do. And, and our homes, because our land, we're limited in land, our land and our homes tend to be smaller over here. Our rooms tend to be smaller. And then there's the cost factor that you got to weigh in over here. I usually tell people if it's not something that's of significant value or significant importance to you, try not to bring it, try to rebuy it over here, pick the house that you want, then go and buy the furniture to fit the house, not the other way around. And if you bring a lot of stuff over here, okay, where are you going to store it in the meantime? A lot of times, people have to get storage containers here. And I, I've got clients that have been storing things for two, three years. The costs on that start significantly adding up. So the more the more that you can purge on the mainland side before coming here, the better off you are. And the less that you come with, the better. Come with just the important items. You can rebuy them over here. They may be a little more costly than they would be on the mainland. Um, but overall, I, I feel like it. Um, you end up coming out a little more affordable on this side when redoing it over here. This has been a great discussion. I really want to thank you guys. I, I'm so, this has been such a nice variety of sort of thoughts. I think dealing with the, with the big, you know, go big or go home kind of a thing, you know, either pack a container and spend seven grand to move it over. Uh, and to your point, Scott, uh, you know, bring over just the valuables because you're going to pay, you know, why you know, <laughs> don't fit the house to the furniture. And then the other one is storage costs. Storage is, you know, ex a real estate is expensive. Therefore, storage is expensive and you're going to, you're going to pay for that. The other thing you got to consider is, is mindset. You know, when people come from, especially a cold climate, 
you know, they, they need 3000 square feet because they spend a lot of time in their house and they have a ton of furniture to fill that 3000 square feet. And they come to Hawaii and they think, wow, man, these homes are 12, 13, 14, 1500 square feet. They seem really small, but you don't take into account the 1000, 1500 square foot lanai, wraparound lanai that you're going to get with that house. And we literally spend 50% of our time outside. We eat dinner outside on the lanai. You know, every barbecue is outside. You know, we strip coffee in the morning outside. You don't really need to spend that much time in your house and you don't need as much furniture to fill that house up. And you may need different types of furniture because you're not going to put a nice leather couch in your lanai. You're going to need, you're going to want some, some outdoor furniture that's going to hold up to the weather. So that's always something to consider is the type of furniture that you need. Yeah, those are all great, uh, great points. Um, we had a follow on a, a, a quick one uh, from uh, Jana says, you know, when you ship your car, can you put boxes in it? No. In fact, uh, you can even fill the tank. You can even have a full tank of gas in that car. Uh, I've, if I'm not mistaken, they want you to have less than a quarter tank of gas, which of course makes sense from a safety perspective, but you cannot put anything in that car. So uh, sorry, Charlie, I, I had a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, folks who had asked me, oh, hey, how about if I take a van? Can I bring a van and stuff it full of materials? Like, no, 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 you can't do any of that. All right. Uh, let us move on to our next uh, section over here. So we're going to do something new today. We uh, brainstormed a little bit and I want to introduce a new segment and we're calling this Diamonds and Deals. And, uh, you know, I I kind of, you know, living in Hawaii.com, you know, my whole uh, point of this is it's an aspirational sort of a, a, a groove, right? Because, you know, living in Hawaii is not just like moving to any other state. It's a special place. Hawaii is an amazing, magical place. It's the greatest place on earth, in my opinion. And uh, we wanted to kind of show some, some properties in Hawaii, not to sell them. I mean, because, you know, you can go to Redfin or Zillow or whatever, or, or talk to uh, myself or Dylan or Scott, if you want to buy a, a property. But I want to kind of give you folks some aspirational sort of stuff, some amazing things, some diamonds and some deals. And so uh, that's what the show is. So let's move into our first uh, first property over here. Now, this one is, this is Dylan's, this is Dylan's property. Um, there we go. So Dylan, why don't you fill us in here on, on is this a, is this a diamond or a deal or what is it? I think this one is both. So this came on the market on Monday and uh, immediately got contacted by a couple of different buyers that are interested in this area. But this is a beautiful property right on the edge of the poly, which is a, a cliff overlooking Kalakikua Bay. And it's on five acres a beautiful small home. It's not a, it's not a crazy home. It's just a three bedroom, two and a half bath home, but it's on five uh, nice kind of flat acres of pasture and 1.3 million is a, a, a pretty good deal for the, the pool and all of that space. And in an area that there isn't very much inventory. So there isn't a lot of turnover in this area and a sweeping, amazing view of the South Kona coastline. So you can see all the way down to Mililii. And this is in uh in Captain Cook, right above Kalakikua Bay. So as you look at, if you're familiar with Kalakikua Bay and you look up on the cliff, um, the, the high side of it, and that's where Captain Cook discovered the Hawaiian Islands was he sailed into Kalakikua Bay. Um, beautiful, beautiful property. And uh, I think it's priced great. And actually I talked to the listing agent yesterday and they already had four offers on it. So obviously a good deal if wow. there's that many people interested. Man, that that is a. I mean, I'm I'm just looking. I think the first thing, of course, what struck me on this on this uh, this uh, slide that you put together here was that that crazy view off the pool. I mean, that's just like just a just you know stunning. Um, and it's and an open area. concept house where the 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 front door is a is a big slider, and then the door that goes out to the pool is a big slider. So you can basically open up the whole entire center of the home, and as you walk into it, you're looking at the pool and at that view from your kitchen table or your kitchen. I mean, it's just a great design, beautiful property. Yeah. And it looks like you said that those five acres look fairly, fairly level. It's not like you're on the side of a side of a mountain of five acres. It's like, you know, flat land. Yeah. Um, that is a, well, thanks. That's, that's, that's a heck of a property there. I want, I'd like to know what you folks think about that. Those are the, those of you who are watching, uh, what do you think of this, this, this bad boy? All right, let's, let's, uh, Scott's got one for us. Uh, let's look at, let's look at Scott. Scott, what do you got here? Yeah, so this is a, a condo in Waiea, um, which is in Ward Village. This was actually the first tower that uh, the Ward Village development did, Howard Hughes, uh, did. And it's right across the street from Ala Moana Beach Park. So walkability to the beach park. Then they're developing that whole Kaka'ako Ward Village area out. So everything's going to be more pedestrian based 
uh, will be. And they're even talking about making walkways over Ala Moana um, Boulevard there to be able to walk over to the beach park eventually. But this one's actually, it's obviously on the, the higher end side. So diamond and deal though, however, because the 33rd floor unit sold similar square footage. And by the way, this is just under 2,000 square feet, two bedroom, two and a half bath. But you see diamond head framed in that, that view there from your living room, uh, which is a very desirable view. Diamond head views are significantly desirable to the Japanese buyer more so than the sunset views and it's interesting when you get on the sunset side of a building you get that late afternoon sun now you get the sunsets but you end up getting that the pounding heat a lot of times so a lot of people prefer this view more you know so. i i want to hold you on just yeah that that i want to catch that thought for just a moment that's a big one that a lot of people you don't really realize until you've actually moved into a house for example but the diamond head facing views you're facing the morning sunrise and so yep. you catch the morning sun but afternoon and the and the sunset is nice and cool because you're you're facing uh, sunrise. Whereas if you get a um, a, a sunset facing uh, property, uh, you you have a, a cool morning. But man, that afternoon sun really kind of boils in, and that for some reason it's it's hotter on the sunset side than it's hotter on the it's hotter on the sunset side than it is hotter on the morning sunrise side. I don't know exactly know why, but that's actually an important distinction. A lot of people don't like the sunset facing properties. Now you get a gorgeous sunset, but you also get a, a lot of heat. So I'm sorry for, for interrupting, Scott. I just want to kind of point that out. That, that's an important piece I thought that people would like to know, but go ahead. So continue. Yeah, and, and most people don't realize it, but when you get that late afternoon heat and sun, you don't want to open your windows. You want to close them off and, and turn the air conditioning on, which kind of partly defeats the purpose of why you're coming here to be in Hawaii. You want the fresh, clean air, the the nice breezes and you want to open your windows up and en enjoy those breezes coming in. So that early morning side is actually a pref more preferred side for most people. Um, this one's listed at 3.35. Now the, the 33rd floor sold for 4.4 and the sixth floor, which basically has no view sold for 2.5 million. So this one's already undervalued uh, where they've listed it at. But this tower is one of the premier towers in Honolulu. They have concierge service. They got a golf simulator, a movie theater room. They even have a chef's kitchen, private room area that you can- Wait, 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 wait. Did you say golf simulator? Golf, golf. simulator. Yep. <laughs> Valet parking. It's got everything, infinity pool, but you can, one of the nicer features is you can have a lot of friends over, reserve this kind of private area that has a chef kitchen hire a chef to come in and, and come in and cook and, and do base, basically a catered dinner for you and your guest right there in the, uh, in the private room portion with the views and whatnot. So you get a lot of amenities with this one. Man, you know, I got to tell you what's, what's so cool about the, these two, uh, and both of them are certainly aspirational properties. This is like, wow, you know, valet, golf simulator, et cetera. It's the, it's the classic. Uh, what I love about these two, it's a, it's a classic sort of contrast between sort of a country home and a city home. They're both stunning. They're both amazing. I mean, look at that pool view that you've got there, Scott. Um, and, you know, we saw Dylan's pool view on, you know, five acres. So you have one in the country, five acres overlooking a stunning view. And you've got this one, uh, you know, high, high, you know, your, your classic urban high rise, amazing Hawaii home. Scott, why did you pick this one uh, out of all the properties that you've seen? What made you kind of pull this one out? What is it about it that you like the most? I um, mean, it's undervalued for one. I mean, it, the, the list price on it or the sale price should be above this. And it's what, it's just a really dynamite property that they put together here in Honolulu. Unique architecture, a lot of really nice amenities, great views. Uh, some of the top of the line finishes on the interior of the property. So it's a quality property, but it is at a value. Yeah. Cool, man. Awesome. All right. Uh, let, thanks guys. Uh, folks, I'd love to get some feedback from you on the diamonds and deals segment. Did you like this? Should we continue with aspirational properties? Um, things that like are like this, uh, that kind of help us to kind of, you know, set our sites higher. I'd like to get your folks feedback on that. Or if there's something else that you'd like to see, if you want to see, uh, you know, dumpster deals, <laughs> something like that, just came up with that now, but, uh, love to get your folks feedback on, on what you all think. Okay, let's move on. So uh, here's one, and um, it says, uh, is there a place with thick vegetation, very malka on Oahu, where it would be allowed to run an Airbnb or a Mr. B&B, where there would be a good 
pool or space for a pool where the town would find it okay for LGBT visitors to stay. I need to live on Oahu if I move to Hawaii because I need bi-weekly maintenance treatment for blood cancer. Actually, I would prefer the island of Hawaii, but from what I have read, the hospitals there do not have specialists. So let's kind of let's take this as a sort of a two-part kind of a question. Uh, first, uh, Scott, uh, can you uh, hit this one uh, first? Uh, looking for uh, uh, Airbnb, Malka on on uh, on the Malka when uh, uh, when Rob here Lopaka is saying Malka Malka in Hawaiian is mountain. So I'm assuming that Rob, you're talking about a mountain, uh, sort of a, a, a place. Uh, so Scott, uh, how would you respond if he's looking for if uh, Lopaka here is looking for an Airbnb or Mr. B and B place on Oahu in the mountains? Yeah, I mean, if he, he's pretty much referring to a single family home, and the single family home side is going to be either residential or ag zoning, country zoning, and none of those fit the the Airbnb bill at this at this point. It's basically resort zoned, and it's been the Airbnb portion or vacation home rental portion is re restricted more or less to resort zone, um, which is going to be condo in Waikiki or on or on one of the resort properties such as you know Turtle Bay, Koalina, and even then there's some restrictions the association have put in. So you get into the residential areas, they're not allowed. You can do the ADU, which is an accessory dwelling unit, and but then your minimum six month rental on that portion or if you are in residential, it's minimum 30 day rentals. Unless you can find an, an already existing bed and breakfast with the license that they've been carrying since like 1980 something, I can't remember the exact year, but they cut off that date way back then and they had to can carry that license all the way through and there's only like three or four of them that I know of and they never come so on the market. So really, that that whole uh, the Airbnb uh, question on Oahu is fraught with landmines. Now we've touched about this topic earlier. It's fraught with landmines. Uh, I think I recall the the example you gave a while ago was the Alamoana Hotel. There's even the Alamoana Hotel says you can only do vacation rentals, but the air but the but the the the, the county uh, law say you can't do vacation rentals. So there's like almost a conflict going on. So it's it's a mess. Um, now. Uh, uh, Rob here gave his reason for Oahu because of his medical treatments, and I'm sorry to hear about that, Rob. I wish you well. Uh, keep you in my prayers, uh, Dylan. Um, what's you know? Let, let's just kind of hit the medical issues aside, or maybe if you want to talk about that too. If someone was looking for like an Airbnb along the lines of of what Rob was talking about, Airbnb sort of place in the mountains on the Big Island, what would be your response? Well, the Big Island vacation rental bill is a little bit different and you may be able to figure it out. You would have to do a hosted rental though. So you would either have to live in the property and then rent out portions of it or have a caretaker live on it and rent out portions of it, whether it be just bedrooms or maybe you have an upstairs downstairs type situation. So if you're looking at mountain living, you're definitely better off looking probably on Maui or the Big Island because Oahu doesn't have as many high elevation um, type communities, unless you're just looking to be up, you know, up up the the ridge a little bit, um, but still the elevation is, isn't as as high as as uh, you get on the Big Island. So there definitely could be some options depending on your situation. You just do want to be careful about it because there are landmines all over the place with short term rentals, and you do you do want some very informed expert advice before you make a decision on a property. So actually, I'm going to kind of blend this one to like a second half of this. They're, they're somewhat uh, related. Uh, this is for the big on. This is James from San Francisco. And he says, my wife and I are looking for a rental to purchase on the big island. I see there are many units going up for rent in Kona. Is it possible to approach the owners to offer to purchase the unit? So Dylan, if James was going to hire you to kind of help him find a rental unit, kind of how would you go? How would you respond to this? How would you go about that for him? Well, if you're looking for a uh, vacation rental type unit, there's a lot on the market right now because people are not renting their units and they're sitting empty. So there, there is a lot of inventory and the sales for condos are down over 65%. So there is some inventory available if you're looking to buy a rental right now. I think it's probably a good time because you can find some deals where sellers may sell for less than they would have before given the current situation. And even with everything changing, I don't expect short-term renters to return in droves it's going to take it's going to take months for the level of visitors to go up to what it was prior to the lockdown but um in terms of contacting owners if there is a specific 
complex and a specific maybe building in that complex that you are really interested in, we can pull the, the, the taxpayer records and there's a mailing address attached to that. And I have in the past mailed to all of, you know, maybe there's 25 units that, that fit the bill that you would want to purchase. And I can mail them all a letter asking them if they are interested in selling. And sometimes you get a response and get lucky. Uh, the other way is I just look at the taxpayer names and, and many times I've run into people that I either know or, I, or know someone that I know knows them and I can track down an email address or phone number. So it takes a little bit of investigating, but it's possible to track down owners. That's a really great point about the local connection. That's a that's a fabulous you know, story right there. Of like this is why you kind of want to have someone who's local and knowledgeable in the area because the contact, the what we call the coconut wireless network is is very uh, pervasive and powerful. Hey, while uh, while we're all talking about this sort of stuff, there's a question that popped up. Uh, uh, Joe Joe Greer says, "Are you seeing a, a tsunami of foreclosures coming in?" Uh, that's an interesting question. You guys want to, is there any, you guys have any indication, any stories, any kind of insight you could lend to uh, Joe's question? Are, 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 is a tsunami of foreclosures predicted to come in? Uh, Scott, why don't you start us off with that one? Um, so I don't really see that happening. Not yet. The market's in too strong of a position right now. You know, if the economic impact continues to happen, I see where the hotels were talking about laying off um, some workers and things. So I do expect some triple trickle down, but right now we've been on a run for over eight years in an up cycle for prices. So most people are going to have equity in their property at this point and they'll put it on. If they have to, they get into a stress position, they'll put it on the market, sell it and walk away with some money. The, uh, obviously there'll be some people that will be underwater, but I don't see it coming. And, you know, it, it's all going to depend on kind of how this tourism play comes back and how the economy starts going. The longer this trickles out, the, the bigger impact we will have. Um, but we're still in a position where prices are going up and we have restricted inventory. So people can put their home on the market and sell it at a profit right now. Yeah, that's a, that's a very interesting. Now, so, Dylan, what's, is, is, what's the word on the street uh, on the Big Island that, that you're hearing? So I always add the context. I agree with Scott. I don't, I don't see that coming. And, and the main reason is, is this economic uh, turmoil that we're in or downturn that we're in right now is very different than the housing bubble crisis that we saw in 2007 and 2008. And the main reason for that was there's been a lot of federal laws put into place to protect the market from what had happened 10 years ago. And in that crisis where people who shouldn't be buying homes were buying homes that were overpriced and getting themselves over uh, overextended in really bad situations. And I use myself as an example. I was, uh, I think, 23 or 24 when I bought my first house. I was in college on the GI Bill. Didn't have any type of savings. My wife, we weren't married yet. She was a teacher for like six months. And we got a mortgage to buy a house. We had no business buying a house. This was like in 2005. But we could because of the way the lending laws were back then. It's much tougher now. So if you bought a house in the last 10 years, you had to be in a much better financial position. And like Scott said, if you bought a house five or six years ago and you lose your job today, you, you probably have 15, 20% equity in your house, even if you put very little money down. So you can just put it on the market, sell it and walk away with some cash. So it's unlikely we're not in the same type of situation we were 10 years ago uh, during the economic crisis and housing bubble. It's very different. So so we've been talking about this issue comes up practically every at every show. Like, are the prices going to go down? It's, and and every single and we've been doing this for almost a couple of months now. I think, um, I believe so. And um, the answer has been always no, and not no by our opinions, but no from what the market data is showing us. So, so folks, I I think and now hopefully this COVID thing is hopefully coming to an end. Seems to me that the answer to this is kind of a resounding no. Things are going to pretty much, they may, there may be a little bit of a slowdown in terms of the price increases or a little slowdown in terms of market. There may be some pockets like Waikiki, for example. But uh, if this thing is, looks like it, it is moving forward. All right, Scott, you, you, had, uh, you were going to say something. Yeah, so the, the interesting thing on the history of Oahu, if you look back in the 70s, 60s and 70s, Oahu was adding 14,000 new units per year. And a lot of that was Waikiki development. That's where you see there was no regulation, very little. So you have units with no parking in, in Waikiki, which makes no sense. And then the, the city and county swung the pendulum in the complete opposite direction and made buildings so restrictive 
that we're building new units but can't even keep up with the local demand, much less the offshore demand. So we always have the supply demand imbalance, which drives up prices, which also means there's not a lot of supply on the market all the time, which is why we don't see a wave of, of foreclosures. That's why in the 2008 bubble, when things busted, we only we only dropped 11 percent from top to bottom was because we didn't have a glut of supply. Right. Yeah. We didn't. Uh, I I characterize it as we didn't uh, go to the party. Therefore, we didn't get the hangover on that on that on that whole craze. All right. Um, but let's let's get to our let's get to our next one over here. So this one is um, kind of in the same kind of a topical area. We're talking about uh, uh, buying rental. So here is from uh, Eric from Warsaw, Poland. Aloha, Eric. He says, "What top advices would you have for a U.S. non-resident planning to buy a condo on Oahu as a short-term rental investment? I plan to live in this condo with my family for three to eight weeks, and for the rest of the year, would like to rent it with an assistance of a dedicated agency broker. Your advice would be priceless. Mahalo, Scott. How do you? Uh, how, that sounds like almost what what we call the the uh, the snowbird effect over here. The folks that, that we have a lot of them that are in, in Canada, the Canadian snowbirds that come over here for a few months out of the year or whatever, and then they go back. What? How would you set up uh, Eric uh, or Eric to uh, deal with that? Yeah, I mean, finding the unit that's that's pretty easy as long as you know we just identify one that you can short term rental. And and in fact, I would actually even recommend in this situation you don't need to go to the short term rental only standpoint you can do 30-day increments and and still generate good income and good occupancy rates and whatnot and have it covered and rent it out for you uh, or even minimum six months you just block off that time i think that the more important thing to protect the asset protect the investment is you're going to need to interview property managers and make sure you get the right property manager that you're going to work with because they're going to be the eyes and ears for you here in maintaining and, and making sure everything runs smooth. Because if you're out of the country and, and things don't go right, you have to fire that person or something goes wrong, you're half a world away having to deal with that. And that could become a headache real quick. So finding the right property manager is the more important part, which is what we can help with. We know the people in this market that can do those things. I got a quick personal question for you, so to speak. Uh, uh, I've, I've, I've always, I've, I haven't done this, but I've always thought about what about those properties that that have this hotel pool, where the property is like a hotel, it, uh, operates like a hotel, but there's sort of condo units in it, and you have a unit, and you put the you put the unit in the in the hotel pool or the rental pool, and the property kind of takes care of it for you, and then you pull it sort of out of the hotel pool or the you know um, the, the the rental pool, and you move move into it so that that is sort of a built-in feature of that building what do the numbers look like on those are those financially viable do those make sense is that some kind of a recommendation that that you would have well you bring up an interesting question and and the question is, is how much what, what kind of return do you need on this thing and how much involvement do you want to have you want to put it in a hotel rental pool like that set it on autopilot and, and forget it your returns are very minimal they're i mean uh, you're not even hitting three percent on your if you put paid cash and not even get a 3% return and they You're take for it. percent of the income coming in, they handle all the marketing, everything, the maid service, the whole nine yards, it's set it and forget it. But, and for me, I look at that and go, eh, is that really what I want to do? Now you can get some where you have a 20% property management fee or 25 or 30% kind of in that range. And there's more flexibility. You're going to be able to make a little more money on the, the cash flow side, but you may have a little more accounting that you have to do hand holding paying for stuff that needs to be replaced. So there's a whole spectrum that you need to look at. And part of it is your involvement and, and your trust with, you know, how much of a return that you want to get out of it. Yeah. Great. Uh, Dylan, is there anything that's different about this, uh, this setup, uh, you know, kind of, again, this sort of a snowbird approach, I'm going to, you know, come and hang out there for a month or two and then uh, rent it back off for the rest of the year. Is there, is, is there a different kind of a recommendation you would have on the big island? No, same. I mean, Scott, Scott hit the nail on the head and it's really, you know, what is your, what are your objectives financially? Because some people breaking even is just fine. If they have a place to stay for three to eight weeks a year for pretty much free and, you know, they'll make appreciation in the property value over time. So if they're not cash flowing it on a month to month or yearly basis, they just want to break even have, you know, pay the taxes, pay the maintenance fees, pay the mortgage and be okay, then that works. But it just depends on what your financial goals are with the property. 
Excellent. Hey, we've got about six minutes left. I wanted to kind of uh, try to hit a couple of these. Um, uh, we, are, we have a couple of uh, shout outs and, a, and a, couple of, a couple of questions over here. I want to get thanks to a uh, uh, shout out to Teresa for, for giving us there. Nice to, good to see you, get to see you guys there. We're looking forward to seeing you guys. I'm sure you guys will be coming over to see us soon. I'm looking forward to all that. And we have we have uh, Dylan, uh, your 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 uh, uh, your Hanaid auntie over here. Joyce is Joyce is here with us. So, uh, hey Joyce, uh, thanks for answering the question about the uh, and reconfirming the not even an owner's manual in the car, uh, only allowed license plates. How's that for the, that's a that's a good one. Um, it, let's see. There we have a, a couple of other uh, some some quick ones over here. So, uh, uh, Mike, uh, any are there any cheaper places to rent in Oahu in jobs that would help with that rent? Uh, you know, there's always cheaper, but there's a there's a price that you're going to pay, uh, Scott. I mean, real, real, really, really quick. Is there anything? You know, how would you say? Look, if there's cheaper, what's what's your quick answer? Yeah, I actually just had someone who's going to be w working out in Kapolei, and they're in Maka They ended up renting at Makaha Valley Plantation, out in Makaha, for eleven hundred bucks, twelve hundred bucks a month on a two bedroom. So they, they're able to accomplish that. And then the trade-off factor. Luckily, they're working in Kapolei, but that's still the commute. And then you're out in the distance on the countryside. So there is there is cheaper, but there's always a price to pay. Is is the quick answer. Um, uh, Rob Rob Hankey says, uh, "Where is the best place to look for retirement?" That's a big. I don't think that's a fast question. I think it depends. I mean, we had touched upon this earlier. Healthcare, uh, Dylan. What's the what's the situation with healthcare availability on the Big Island? You know, Oahu's got like the big hospitals, and I know I have I have friends that live in Hilo uh, who have to fly to Oahu twice a month for uh, treatments. So what's the what's the status of the, sort of the the healthcare issue on on the Big Island? You know, healthcare like everything else is a supply and demand issue, right? And to have really specialized doctors and the equipment that it takes to give that care you have to have enough s demand for it to use it and to pay for it and in most cases on these uh, less populated islands you know we only have 180,000 people on the big and it might be 190,000 we'll find out at the next census but it the population base isn't large enough so if you go to any small town in America you're not going to have the same type of facilities as you will in a big city so that's basically what you what you face when you're on a neighbor island is you know you, go to any population that's 200,000 or less and we're going to have similar healthcare. Our healthcare is very good. Our hospitals are very good if you have, if you need emergency care, but if you need any type of specialized care, you do need to go to Oahu. Yeah. And, and most health insurers pay for that. You know, if you have good health insurance, mm. they pay for your travel to Oahu and your hotel room and things like that. So, yes, is it a pain, but if you're in a rural area in America somewhere else, you're still going to drive 2 or 3 hours to get to a city and get that care. So, it's pretty similar only you get to ride a plane. Great. That's a great response. So it's a, basically it's similar to any other sort of rural area in America. You're going to have that same health care uh, dilemma that you have to deal with that you don't have. Uh, great. Um, here's a, let's see, we got one here. Oh yeah. From uh, Karamia is Eva Beach a nice area if you don't need to commute? It's a quick answer, Scott. We're running, we're, we're, we're about to run out on time. Quick answer. I actually think this is a great place for retirement. You got eight golf courses in the area. You've got, you got the new mall, you've got access to Kapolei. If you don't have to really leave that area, you got new home construction, master plan communities, and a lot of things at your fingertips. Mm, so the commute's a big factor. And if you don't have a commute, that's not, not, not a bad, not a bad way to go. Mm -hmm. Um, Excellent. Great. Uh, hey, Alec, welcome back. I uh, remember you from one of our previous shows. I uh, got a good question regarding the recent new rules when arriving on the island. Since I won't be able to get tested prior to leaving, is there a way to get tested once I get there and quarantine until the results come back? The There there was a question that was asked of that nature. Unclear. Response is unclear. So they have not given an official yay or nay on that. And that's all I can tell you. Uh, anything else is, is the guess. What I do know is pre-tested good post-tested, not good. Frankly, I, I'm i sure you have your reasons why you can't get pre-tested, but I would get pre-tested. It's going to get easier and easier on the mainland. Um, here are some folks in California. have a, a, It's trivial to get pre-tested and you get the results right away. So I would say get pre-tested. Um, let's see. The uh, uh, Jim, uh, Oahu is the best island for hospital medical care. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Oahu's got it down. It, again, because to Dylan's point, it's got the population center. So there's a million plus people on Oahu, just like any other city that has a million plus people. Versus uh, uh, Dylan, what's the what's the population of sort of like the Kona uh, area, roughly? Like sixty thousand. 
sixty thousand. So, yeah. like any other small town, would I would even bet to say that Kona probably has better facilities than a small town in America with sixty thousand, because a small town in America with sixty thousand probably is about an hour or two drive away from a big city, whereas Kona, you're you know a couple of hours of of a, of a flight from a big city. Um, let's see. I think I think that's pretty much it for everybody. Um, so I, I kind of want to uh, uh, urge you all to uh, come back and, and see us. We're gonna we're gonna be back in a in a couple of weeks. Uh, where's my last show here? Yeah. So we're gonna see you back in a couple of weeks. We have some other questions that we have queued up for that show. Uh, there'll be more exciting stuff. Uh, Scott or Dylan, you guys, is you guys have any uh, cliffhangers for us that we want to talk about in a couple of weeks that you guys can can think of? No, I do want to clarify the ADU portion next next uh episode there is a little element that dylan touched on but no i we, i love answering the questions bring on the questions because it keeps us sharp and I, we love sharing the information with you and if it helps you get over here uh in some kind of way uh, that's kind of our goal is to, to be able to help you to share the knowledge that we have so you can make the best decision for yourself yeah great close uh, dylan what about you Any, anything you want to kind of prep us for or make us think about before next week yeah, I'm good. Just thanks everybody for watching and, and engaging and sending us questions. It's always fun. And let us know if you guys need anything. Yeah, it really makes the show great. And by the way, we're also splitting up. I, I take these clips and I also split them up uh, into clips and they, I put them on the on our real estate, Hawaii real estate YouTube channel. So they come up, you know, once a week is kind of, I break this up in addition to this show, which is going to be right on YouTube the moment after we, we close this uh, final thing. So so Alex, I got a five day drive just to get to California. Then I'm leaving. Alec, I would try to get a I, I don't know where you're at, but I would try to get a flight out of where you're living so that you can kind of jump into California quickly. But I think that's it, folks. I uh, want to thank you all for, uh, for for joining us. It's uh, It's been great as usual. Love having you all. Stay tuned. Uh, livinginhawaii.com is the website. Put your uh, sign up for the newsletter, and we'll see you all in two weeks. Uh, aloha, everyone. Take care. See you guys later.